Hi everyone, in this video we're going to see how to use Coder, which is basically a service that allows us to use VS Code, Visual Studio Code, both on a Chromebook and in Google Cloud Platform in a very easy manner within the web browser. So the first thing we're going to do is do the easy part, which is going to be seeing it on the Chromebook, and then we'll jump to Google Cloud Platform, which is going to take a few more steps. So let's get started. So the first thing you want to do is go down here to your settings, and then go to Linux Beta, and then we're going to click on Turn On here. And then it's going to ask us to set up Linux. We're going to click on Next. And then here it's going to ask you to put a username. You can put any username you want. And down here you can click on Custom. And here we're just going to bump it up to anything greater than 30. So you can leave it at 35 if you want. Anything greater than 30 is fine. So we'll leave it like that. And then we're going to click on Install. This is going to take a few minutes, but just in case, if your Chromebook doesn't have that much space, if it only has 16 gigabytes of hard drive, you're going to have to leave it down around three or four gigabytes, obviously. But the idea is to give it around 30 so it has enough room to breathe. So once that's done, it's going to throw out a terminal like this. We'll come back to this in a second. Just wanted to show you guys that the reason why I was able to change the size of Linux is because I am now in version 85. So from version 85 onwards, you're going to be able to change that size for the Linux container. Good. So now that's done, we're going to jump into what we need to put in here. So coming back to the page here, we're just going to scroll down and then we're going to go here to code server and go to view repo. Once we get to here, we're going to go down to where it says doc guide here for a full setup and walkthrough. We'll click on that. So once we get here, all we have to do is scroll down to where it says number two. And this is all we'll need for actually the Chromebooks. And this first line here is just to see how the instructions are. And the second one is actually to install it. There's only one line. Now, to make sure that it runs in the background, we are going to check this out so I can show you guys what you need to do to run it in the background. So we'll just click on this guy for now, Control C, and we'll go back to our Linux terminal. Here, the first thing we're going to do is update this guy just to make sure that everything is set and ready to go. So we're going to do sudo apt get update and then enter, and then we'll come back after this is done. Okay, so once that's done, we just come back in here, we'll clear here, and then we're going to paste what we had before, and then this will pop out, and all we need is this line here. So we're actually going to combine this line with the other one that's on at the website to get this going, so we'll be right back. Okay, so now that we have the other line, we're just gonna clear this up, and then we're gonna paste both of these in here, as you can see, which is the first line comes from the website, Second line is what's going to do our have our server start in the background. And with that, we'll just click on enter. Okay, so once that's done installing and setting up the server in the background, we're gonna clear this. And the last thing we have to do now is to change the password so that we can jump into our server. So to do that, all we have to do is to paste in the following line. What this is gonna do is bring us to the configuration file for this so we can change the password. We'll click on enter here. Going down here, we're gonna go to password. We're gonna click on Shift A, which will allow us to edit this. We're gonna get rid of all this. Put in your password that you want, which is much easier to remember. This is just a test run, but I do suggest putting in a longer one. Either way here, we'll just put something simple. We'll leave it as test VS code. And then afterwards, we're gonna click on escape and then colon X and then enter. And with that, that's ready to go. And the final thing we have to do is restart this. And we'll do that by pasting in the following line and then enter. And now we are all ready to go. So let's go to our browser and hop in. Once we get to the browser, all we have to do is put in 127.0.0.1 colon 8080 and with that we're going to click on enter then we'll be asked to log in and we're going to put the password we put in previously in the terminal and then we'll click on submit after this vs code comes out in the browser here and the awesome thing is you can actually expand to get rid of the tabs and it completely fills the entire screen which is really awesome and now you can start working in vs code like you normally would and we'll have some other videos on this later on but for now, what we need to do is do the same process now adapted to the Google Cloud Platform so we can do this online if we so wish. Okay, so now that we're in the Google Cloud Platform, which is with console.cloud.google.com, here you can either start off with a, a project already made, or you can go here, click on the arrow going down, and then click on new project to get that set up. We're not gonna see that in this video because I have other videos to talk about this and I'll leave one of those in the upper right hand corner so you can take a look at that. So for now, presupposing that this is ready to go, we'll just hop over here to the upper left, go down to Compute Engine, 
then go to VM instances here. Here we're going to click on create, put whatever title you want in here. After that, go down here, click on US Central F, then go down here, leave these two as they are, E2 and two virtual CPUs with four gigabytes of memory. That's what they suggest that you use. Then you'll have to go down here, change this, put this as Ubuntu, change this to 20.04, change this to 32, and then change this to SSD persistent disk. This is the suggestion that they make, so we're gonna leave it like that. And then we're gonna click on select. Afterwards, click on allow full access to all cloud APIs, then go down and click on allow HTTP and HTTPS. Afterwards, click on create. Keep in mind this instance will cost you around $30 a month if you have it running the whole time. In order to avoid that, please go over here to the three dots here to the extreme right, click on that and click on stop when you are not using this to program so that the price is much less. Once we're done creating this, we're going to go back over here to the three vertical dots and we're going to click on view network details. After that, we're going to click on external IP addresses. And then finally, we're going to go to here where it says type ephemeral and we're going to make that static, which is what they asked for as well. Here you need to set a name and then a description and these can be anything you want. Then we're going to click on reserve. Once that's done, we'll go back to the instance. Okay, once here, we're going to go back here and click on the title of our image. Then we'll click on edit and then go down to SSH here and then click on show and edit. And here we're just gonna leave this for a second and come back to it. Back in the terminal, we're gonna paste the following so we can get the SSH here. Click on enter, click on enter again, one more time and for the last time. Then down here, we're going to copy this, control shift C, go back to the Google Cloud Platform, control V to paste it, get rid of penguin and the at sign and then go down and save. Once that's done, let's jump out of this, copy external IP, come back to the terminal here, clear, and then we're going to SSH into our instance. Using our external IP address, we'll click on enter, type yes, enter, and now we're in, we'll clear this. And now we're gonna do the same similar thing that we did the last time we were doing this locally. So we're going to paste in the following, and we will click on enter. Now to make this more secure, we're gonna get rid of the password and just use the SSH keys so we don't have to worry about that anymore. So we're gonna do the following. We'll clear this, paste the following that we got from the website, click on enter. Now we're gonna restart this again. Paste the following, enter, and you're done. Remember that these steps are also here in on the website that we have here. Now that we're done with that, the last thing we have to do to finally get in is to follow the last steps that we have here down below. So we'll jump back to our terminal here. We'll exit this, that's ready to go. And then we're going to use the format here and jump in by SSH in this manner. So once we have this typed in, all we do is click on enter. After we click on enter, it's actually telling us that this is actually active and ready to go. So all we have to do is go back to the browser. We open up a new tab and put in the same thing we had before, which is 127.0.0.1 colon 8080. After we put this in, we're gonna click on enter. It will jump directly into VS code here. Now, keep in mind, this is actually working from Google Cloud Platform. We are not doing this locally. And we know that because of the fact that it didn't even ask us for a password, which is what we configured this as. To confirm this, we'll go back to the Google Cloud Platform, click on the three vertical dots, and click on stop. We'll know it's stopped because it'll have this grayed out square here. So we'll do this to make sure we don't waste any money on this instance here. Going back here, you're going to see us trying to attempt to reconnect. This confirms that we we're actually using this before within the Google Cloud Platform. As well, if we go back to the terminal, we're going to see that it was actually closed. So all this confirms that we were actually doing this from the Google Cloud Platform. Now, as you can see here, this was actually active the whole time. You can usually leave this open and click on the plus sign here and just start working in another tab if you want. Or you can use something that's called screen and you can also do that to put it in the background here within the Linux terminal, which we can see that in another video. As you can see, the process is really simple to start using VS Code, both on a Chromebook and a Google Cloud platform. Hey everyone, if you have any questions or thoughts about what we saw here, please leave those in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please give a thumbs up and subscribe. And if it helped you in any way, consider applauding to economically support this channel so we can continue offering quality videos like these in the future. See you guys in the next one. Take care.